In this lesson, I'll give you a brief tour of the most important parts of the Visual Studio Integrated Development Environment, or the IDE as it's usually called. Note that the IDE is extremely configurable, so if you move things around, your version may not look much like mine. Let me start by showing you the IDE's main windows. The big area in the center holds designer windows. Right now, it holds the form designer because I have a form open for editing. If you are editing other things such as code, you'll see different editors. For example, if I double click on the form, the code editor opens. Don't worry about the code editor for now, we'll get to that later. The Solution Explorer is normally on the right side of the IDE. It shows the files in the project. You can double click a file in this window to open it in the designer. For example, I'll double click the form to open it in the form designer. Below the Solution Explorer is the Properties window. It displays the properties of whatever objects you currently have selected. For example, if I click on the Solution in Solution Explorer, the Properties window shows the Solution's properties. If I click on the Form, the Properties window shows the Form's properties. One of the more important windows for building forms is the Toolbox. By default, it's to the left of the Designer area and it's set to Auto-Hide. You can make it appear by clicking on it. If you want it to stick around and not Auto-Hide, click the Thumbtack button. The Toolbox contains categories of controls and components that you can place on a form. We'll talk about them in a later lesson. The Data Sources window is also on the left and set to Auto-Hide. You'll use that much later when we talk about database programming. At the bottom of the IDE is the Output window. Visual Studio displays messages here to let you know what it's doing. You can also write code to display output here. Note that the IDE is extremely customizable. You can drag windows around and put them in new positions to suit your needs. For example, I can grab the Solution Explorer and drag it out into its own floating window. If you move the mouse over one of the drag indicators, the IDE shows where the window will land if you drop it there. You can make a window free-floating, dock it to fill an area in the IDE, or make it part of a tabbed window. For example, here I've dragged the Solution Explorer on top of the Properties window so the two of them share a tabbed window. To break the Solution Explorer back out, I'll right-click on its title bar and select Float. Then I can drag it into its normal position. You can drag windows all over the place and arrange them as you like. The IDE also moves things around by itself, depending on what you're doing. It may also change the available menu items and windows depending on what you're doing. For example, notice these toolbar buttons. These are available because the design area has a form open. If I click the Code Editor tab, you'll see that those buttons go away and are replaced by buttons that are useful for editing code. To show one more example, I'll press F5 to run the program. Notice that the windows at the bottom of the IDE have changed. Two that are particularly useful for debugging applications are the call stack, which shows the sequence of program statements that got the program to its current position, and the immediate window, where you can type commands to make the program do things. You'll get more practice with these windows as you learn to write and debug programs. Let me turn now to the IDE's menus. The File menu provides the sorts of commands you would expect in a file menu. It lets you open, close, and save projects, solutions, and files. Let me highlight three commands here. The New Project command creates a new project. In contrast, the Add submenu lets you add a new or existing project to the current solution so you can manage multiple projects in the same solution. Down at the bottom, the Recent Projects and Solutions menu lets you quickly reopen projects that you've worked on recently. It's a quick way to continue whatever you were doing when you logged out last night. The Edit menu provides typical editing commands such as Undo and Redo. The View menu mostly contains commands to help you find windows. This is really useful if you've closed a window and now you want it back. For example, here you can see the commands to open the error list or the output windows. The Project menu contains commands for working with the project. Some of the most useful commands are Add Form, Add Class, and Properties. The Build menu lets you build the solution so it's ready to run. It also contains the Publish command, which lets you publish your finished application so other people can use it. The Debug menu holds debugging-related commands. The Start Debugging command starts the program. The Window submenu lets you open the immediate window if you've lost it. This menu provides a good example of the IDE reconfiguring itself depending on what's going on. If I press F5 to start the program and then open this menu, let's see what happens. You'll see that the commands in this menu have changed. A particularly important one is Break All. That stops the program so you can debug it. It's also very handy to know that command's keyboard shortcut, Control-Alt-Break. If you have a program stuck in an infinite loop, you can use Control-Alt-Break to stop it. Let me stop the program and resume the tour of menus. 
The Team menu contains tools that are useful for programming teams. I'm not going to cover that, so I'll move on to the Tools menu. You probably won't use this menu very often either. It contains miscellaneous commands. I'll talk a bit about the Options command in another lesson. The Test menu holds testing commands. These are most useful for project teams, so I won't cover them either. The Window menu has commands to arrange windows and to let you find the project windows that you already have open. Finally, the Help menu is pretty much what you'd expect. One more important menu is only available when you have a form open for editing. I'll go back to the Form Designer, and now there's a Format menu. This menu holds commands that are useful for arranging controls when you're editing a form. For example, the Align Tops command aligns the controls you have selected so they are lined up at their tops. That's probably enough of a tour for the IDE for now. Take a few minutes and explore on your own. You can try dragging windows around a bit, although I recommend that you don't mess up your Windows basic arrangement too much until you have some experience with the IDE. That way, if I later tell you to look in the Properties window for something, you'll be able to find that window.